United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them. M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. Go ahead. Make my day. So the notion that gun laws don't work, it's not borne out by the evidence. He says that the Chicago police had a plan over this bloody 4th of July weekend. Nonetheless, as you indicated, Corey, there was uh, a uh, count of casualties that could have been from Afghanistan or Iraq. We'll make it uh, harder for law-abiding citizens and criminals will still get their guns. In many cases, the offenders, uh, felons, uh, some out on parole, some out on bond. We have to respect the tradition in this country of people who want to defend themselves and their family from violence. There are people at high levels in this government who have bodyguards 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The average American does not have that. Mayor Bloomberg, why, why, why can you defend yourself but not the majority of Americans. I mean, look at, look at the team of security you got. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this, and we need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Was this the weapon of choice for a new kind of terrorist? When a five-year-old girl said she and a classmate should shoot each other with bubbles, the school calls it a terrorist threat. AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. Lay down your arms, you damn rebels! But we don't need the ability to arm ourselves against the army or the police. What kind of a situation in the U.S. would well, you see like that happening? See, I mean, we've got, got a lot of constitutionalists and a lot of people that, wear, that so. stockpile weapons. Discovered the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. To say we're not turning our guns in and we're not running and we're not backing down. If you want them, come and take them. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up. from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and. And during the summertime, and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Now we have some entries from our Make Fun of Hillary contest, and we will be announcing a winner very soon. But first, let's take a look at a video from Al Parker. In his video, A Joke That Ain't Funny. One of the ideas for a Hillary is the Wicked Witch of the West, with the faces of her many evil familiars grafted onto the bodies of the flying monkeys. I always found it interesting that Hillary and Billary seem to surround themselves with physically distorted, angry misanthropes such as Robert Reich, Donna Shalala, James Carvel, and Madeleine Albright. The Clintons had apparently tapped into the psychology of physically repulsive people who were angry at the world with a thirst for political power to use as payback against the normals like the Morlocks feeding on the Eloy in H.G. Wells' time machine. Or how about that creepy Star Trek episode where a bitter, rejected girlfriend takes over Captain Kirk's body so that she can be the captain of the Enterprise, like a bitter old Hillary having to use Bill Clinton as a front and beard for her own warped ambition. How about depicting her as the revenge-driven brain that wouldn't die? That old 1950s horror schlock classic about a woman whose scientist fiancé got into an auto accident that killed her body but left her head alive thanks to his scientific acumen. Naturally, being a dismembered head in a dish of blood is a rather unpleasant experience, so the bodiless woman becomes unhinged, using her hate-driven mental powers to control a brainless body that just happens to be laying around the lab to do mayhem. I thought this the perfect metaphor for her domineering relationship with the philandering, distracted Bill Clinton as she acted as shadow president. I began to craft the video for the contest, but something kept me from exploiting the idea of a funny Hillary. Alex, you have used comedy very effectively to cut pompous leftists down to size, but Hillary is something quite different. Can we really afford to laugh at the woman who started out her career as a crooked intern during the Watergate scandal, a senior citizen robbing crooked shyster? In Whitewater, uh, the woman who presided over the massive Clinton body count in Arkansas, the theft of the FBI files that adversely influenced politics for decades, not to mention the kidnapping of Elian Gonzalez, the bombing of the Serbs, the destruction of the Middle East and the Benghazi compound. Imagine using a charitable organization to pass government secrets and favors and in the process steal millions. This avaricious woman may just be the most despicable and dangerous figure in modern times. That was a great video, Al. 
Now we go to Greg Cochran, who has a funny take on a game show. Welcome to She Did What? I'm your host, Linus Sight. I'm here with Tommy Swami. Tommy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Are you ready to play? I am. Okay, even though you're in a contestant, you still must buzz in, okay? All right, our subject today is Hillary Clinton, and our first topic is Travelgate. Are you ready? Travelgate, I think so. Okay, here we go. First question. How do you help a relative get a job at the White House Travel Department? Tommy! I help them with a resume. I might give them a few pointers on how to present themselves at the job interview, and I'd write them a nice letter of recommendation. Those are great answers, Tommy, but I'm sorry you're wrong. The actual answer is, no, you would bypass the whole process by having seven employees and fired, and then you would discredit their boss by having him investigated by the FBI and the IRS. That's right, the FBI and the IRS. Tommy, tough one. Let's check your score after round one. What do we got? Oh, big goose egg so far, but that's a tough round. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, Tommy, next topic is whitewater. Whitewater. Here we go. Okay. What do you do when your friend asks your law firm to handle their business for a shady ailing savings and loan? Tommy! Well, because I have morals and standards and I'm a pretty honest guy, I probably wouldn't even take on the case, Linus. That's a great answer. I'm sorry, Tommy, you're wrong. The actual answer is, no, your greedy nature sees the money that can be made, but eventually you have to request the destruction of those files. Oh, that's a tough one, but we have another question on whiteboard. Let's get right to it. Here we go. What do you do when you find out that your friend and lawyer has just committed suicide? <laughs> Tommy? Oh, I would express my sorrow. I'd buy flowers for the funeral, and I might even write a eulogy to say at the funeral. Oh, Tommy, I love your spirit. But actually, you're wrong. I'm sorry, the correct answer is no. You put your chief of staff in charge to raid Vince Foster's office before the police can get there and seal it. So, Tommy, let's check your square after this round. That's another tough one. Let's see what you got. Oh, still running to zero. Okay, let's move on to the next round. Okay, Tommy, our next topic is Benghazi. You ready? I am. Okay, here we go. After the assassination attempt of the British ambassador to Libya, what do you do when the U.S. ambassador to Libya, Chris Stevens, requests added security personnel from your State Department? Tommy? I would immediately send reinforcements to make sure that American lives were protected. You got a great spirit, Tommy, but I'm sorry you're wrong. The actual answer is no. You actually reduce the amount of security personnel one month before the Benghazi attacks. Let's move on. Our next question is still on Benghazi. Here we go. How do you respond to the loss of four innocent American lives in Benghazi? Tommy? I would offer my condolences to their family and I would express my gratitude for their services to America. Oh, uh, Tommy, your childlike innocence is really appealing, I have to tell you, but I'm sorry you're wrong. The true answer is no. Your blackened heart tells Congress, what difference at this point does it make? Oh, that's another tough round. Let's check your score at this point, Tommy. What do you got so far? Let's see. And to last, but certainly not least, we have Michael Dorman with his video, Hillary at Bilderberg. Now, we the Bilderbergs have picked out the next U.S. president, Hillary Clinton. Now, Hillary, you know you must prop up a facade as if you have some supporters <laughs> and make it look like these elections actually matter. Madam Secretary, what are you doing? I'm signing up illegal immigrants to vote for me. That is against the law. We're gonna have to report this. Oh no, you won't. You will get your union to back old Hillary, or I will see to it you Border Patrol don't carry a single sidearm. You'll have to fight off the drug cartels with sticks and stones. You're the witch of Benghazi. You wouldn't do this to your fellow Americans, would you? quicker than you can say fast and furious. <laughs> Hola! Hey, Hillary. What are you doing? 
I'm re-registering dead Americans to vote for me. Oh, how trendy. Will you sign your book for us? We actually read it. We're the only ones who read it. We're from